Hello and welcome back to Technically Speaking. Today we're speaking about speaking technically or more specifically how to effectively communicate the technical parts of our jobs. Before we jump into effective technical communication techniques, trips, tips and tricks. Wow, that was a tongue twister today. I want to level set by talking about what is effective communication and what makes it effective in general. Effective communication is the process of conveying a message or information in a clear, concise, understandable manner to whoever your intended audience is. It involves successfully transmitting that message from the sender to the receiver, where the receiver understands and interprets the message as intended by the sender. That definition on its own makes it sound like effective communication is placed solely upon the sender or the person who is talking. But effective communication is a two-way process where both the sender and receiver participate actively. The sender must be clear and concise in their message and the receiver must actively listen and respond appropriately. So now that we know what effective communication is, what's the difference when it comes to technical communication and how to make it effective? While many of the general principles of good communication will apply to your technical communication, there are three reasons that are top of mind for me that make effective technical communication techniques vary. Number one, technical communication is much more specialized. It involves communicating complex technical information, which may require specialized knowledge or expertise. To be effective, the sender and or the receiver need to be able to translate technical jargon and complex concepts into language that can be easily understood by a non-technical audience. In contrast, general communication is more broad and can cover a wide range of topics and may not require that specialized knowledge or vocabulary. Secondly, technical communication may involve more data and visuals or even specific formats. When we're thinking about technical communication, I wanna think broadly. When I'm solving a technical problem or working on a change, I'm often looking for data to support our actions. Technical communication often involves that data and visuals that could be charts, graphs, diagrams, and may not be as common when we're having a general conversation. Effective technical communication requires the ability to present data and visuals in a way that's easy to understand and also relevant to the audience, even if they're not used to analyzing or viewing information that way. And lastly, technical communication often requires more precision. It requires precision and accuracy as small errors or misunderstandings can have significant consequences. Effective technical communication requires attention to detail and the ability to communicate complex technical concepts with clarity and accuracy. So now that we know what makes effective communication and why technical communication is different than general communication, the obvious question that's left for us is, how do I communicate technical information effectively? I'm gonna go with five things I've learned that have helped me communicate the most important information and do so as clearly as I can. Firstly, Gauge your audience and adjust appropriately. While you're still presenting technical information, you may not have a technical audience. Knowing how deep into the weeds the group will wanna go will help you determine how to prepare the appropriate narrative. It will also help you determine where you need to start on your journey of communicating. If I'm communicating an issue with our platform to a business partner that has no technical knowledge, I have two options. Start with the basics and guide them through learning about the issue, or I can determine what information they need and tailor the communication to that. The latter might look something like, there's currently an issue with our platform integrating with one of your partners. What that means is you can log into the platform and complete the intake forms, but you cannot generate a quote. This allows the business partner to understand the implications of the issue without having me explain that the way the partner consumes data has changed or going through these changes line by line. Secondly, use the appropriate terminology. 
Technical communication often requires the use of specialized terminology that's specific to our field. Most importantly, make sure you understand the terminology and are using it appropriately. I have had many miscommunications because people use terminology they may have picked up from another developer or client, but is not being used appropriately or in a way that the new audience understands. Be mindful of your audience and use language that's appropriate for their level of technical knowledge. Next, provide context. When using technical terminology, provide context to help your audience understand what you're talking about. This can include spending time defining terms, explaining concepts, or providing examples. This one is similar to our first point around gauging your audience, but with a little twist. This principle makes sure that everyone is starting with the same baseline so the new information is understood by all. Number four, organize your information and make sure it's concise. Technical information can be complex, so it's important to organize it in a way that makes sense. Use headings and subheadings to break up information into smaller, more manageable sections and tell a story. Technical information can also be very dense, so it's important to be concise and to the point. Avoid using unnecessary words or phrases and get straight to the meat of the issue. Lastly, tip number five, use examples. Examples can help illustrate technical concepts and make them more tangible. Use real life examples that your audience can relate to and that help to explain the technical information you're presenting to them. And maybe one more bonus tip, be an active listener. While you may enter a discussion or a presentation with a game plan based on the above principles, make sure you're listening actively to the folks you're communicating with. You may have to readjust in order to get your points across, depending on what has been understood and what still needs to be clarified. I hope those tips help. And until next week, thanks for joining us on Technically Speaking, and hopefully these will help you speak technically this week.